No Hi guys, that. welcome to another installment of Season Previews. We've got Cove Ramblers and Cork City today. Delighted to welcome to the show, not for the first time, Tom Stafford, who'll be covering Cove, and Gavin Woods making his debut, who'll be covering Cork City. How are you getting on, lads? Are you well? Good, Keith, and yourself? I'm not too bad. Yeah, very man. good. Not too bad. We'll start with you, Gavin. It was obviously a disappointing 2020 for Cork City. Um, do you see them having a brighter season two twenty one? Obviously, they're in a lower division, but yeah. Well, I suppose to be honest, Keith, it just it depends on like it, the, I, I think the very unfortunate thing that I suppose comes across with every every fan in the club is that you're not actually seeing the team firsthand. You know, going to the games. Obviously, we're only looking at videos, so you're only kind of having an idea of what's happening. Um, like I mean, you know. It is what it is with Cork City, you know. There's no getting away from it. They weren't good enough last year, and like, like obviously they're 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 they'll want to get back up as soon as possible to the Premier Division. But like that 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 doesn't mean nothing. Like they have to do they have to do the hard work and get on with it and get try and get back up to the, the Premier Division. But I mean, like it's it's all about you know just taking game by game and hopefully things will improve. But like as I said, I won't know till I watch the game this Saturday and we'll sort of Sunday when it. And see how it goes, you know. We we'll have to wait and see till then. But you know, like they had they had to make changes. They had to get rid of players and they had to bring in younger players. And I think that's what Colin Healy is will be good at doing, especially that he was involved with the underage setup there. So he'll know a lot of the younger fellas that he's after bringing bringing through. So you know, hopefully that'll that'll stand to the club this year. You know, mm. Tom. In fairness, Cove Ramblers just missed out in the playoffs last season. They've kept most of their squad. They have added some players in as well. Um, I suppose David Hurley being such a key player for the club is a loss. What do you think about that yourself? Yeah, look, it's, it's hard to know as well, similar to what Gavin said, when you haven't seen the friendlies in, in the flesh, like it's it's always difficult to know. But I think if you look at the squad overall, it's it's definitely stronger than last year. I think last year towards the end, bodies were a bit light. You know, we were we just had maybe the 18, 19 in the squad and it was taking its toll, you know, if lads were suspended or injured, whereas now you've 26 in the squad, which is quite big, I think, because there's no 19 squad really that you can dip into. He has to have a big senior squad. But obviously Dave is a loss. He's been around here so long and he's part of the furniture. But um, I think, you know, Galway is a good challenge for him and it's it's good to see um, him getting a chance in full-time football. But definitely there's there's um, causes to be optimistic. You know, like you said, we, we kept... Besides Dave, really, we kept the core of that squad that finished out last year, brought in the likes of um, Keane Murphy, centre-back, Dave O'Leary, centre-mid, a lot of players from the Munster Senior League who maybe mightn't be too well-known nationally, but here in Cork, we would see the Senior League a lot, and and these are very good players when you see them every week, you know, at the likes of Corinthians or Avondale. So I think we'll, we'll um, cause a few surprises, and look, who knows where we'll end up. Yeah, there's obviously, you mentioned that as well, you brought in Jack Hegarty from Middleton, uh, James McCarthy, Middleton, David O'Leary, you mentioned there, Avondale, Kieran Griffin from Cove Wonders, and Caitlin Rooney, I believe, from Yall United. So, are there any players there? Who would you pick out there as being the kind of top sign in from your point of view? Yeah, there's kind of two types. There's the more younger lads who are 19, 20, the likes of Rooney and Griffin there, who it might take them a year to, to kind of come into senior football. They've they've started at senior league level, but you know, they're they're probably a bit lower down in their development, and this is about them getting used to the league. Whereas I think Hagerty, he's that bit older, he's 25, 26-ish, same with McCarthy. Um, so they'd definitely be two. They've They've done a lot in intermediate football and, and they want to show themselves at this level. So two of them, I think, from what I've heard, they'll, they'll be challenging for starting, um, starting places. And then I think David Valeri is a massive signing in, in centre mid. Yeah, like he he knows the league as good as anyone. He's been he's played for about a decade, Limerick, Shells, Galway City. Um, so he'll he'll kind of fill in there where Dave is gone. And I think he'll he'll guide the likes of um Pierce Phillips now and a few lads who are a bit younger, which is which is huge for us because it's something we probably haven't had in other years. Absolutely. Now, Cork City, Gavin, they obviously brought in Paul Hunt, not to be from Cove Ramblers, Stephen yeah. Beachy, Jamie Wynn, Gordon Walker, George Heaven, and Jack Baxter. Um, it's a not, it's there's some good signings in there. Who do you like over there? Well, I've seen a bit of Jack Baxter there on, you know, on Preston's kind of watch their videos and stuff. He looks decent in midfield and he's left-footed as well. So I think if, if he starts or whichever, I think he'll start well, he'll start well next, in next to Garrod Morrissey. I watched 
the game against Waterford, the preseason game, they beat him there 3-0 two weeks ago or whatever. And George Heaven at centre half looks very strong. He looks very big, very commanding. Um, I think like hopefully, you know, he he'll be like I think they need somebody like that back there as well, you know. Um, obviously, look, Stephen Beat, he is, you know, they said he's the most famous dub ever to play for Cork City, like, you know, so I think, I think that at the time when he came back, it was a huge moral boost because at the club, you didn't know whether, what was happening at the club at the time, twin takeover and money and who's going to be manager and, you know, I believe they were trying to get it over the line for a while, so I think he's a huge boost anyway to the club for his experience, like, and um, I, like, as I said, like, it's a pity, you know, even this Saturday alone playing Cove, you know, that's, you, you couldn't go down to, to, to like it to be a great game to watch, like, you know, it's, it's especially local derby first game of the season, like, and to be like, it's a pity, it'd be fantastic just to go back out to watch a game. But, you know, as I said, look, we just have, like, like Tom there, we just have to watch and like yourself, we have to watch things online, just judge it from that at the time being till till we see how the games go, you know? So yeah. we just have to wait and see. In fairness to I ta- I ta- Go sorry. ahead. I, I think they're in connection. Tom was saying they were Cove. I think Dave Valeri is a great addition to the Cove side there. Um, I think when he was with City at the time, he was very unlucky because he was there around the time, I think, of like you, Garrod Morris, you, Colin Healy and Conor McCormick. So like he was never going to get in ahead of the three of them at the time. But he was, I remember him. And when he did play, he was a fine player. I think he's a huge addition to Cove, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Now, in fairness, though, it looked like at one point the Cork City would have to play pretty much their academy players. Now, by the way, they've got a good academy. But just looking at those names, you would have taken that a few months ago, big time, wouldn't you, to get some of those names into the club? Like, Oh, absolutely, yeah. And I say, I, I think, like, I was watching I was watching um, a recording there with the chairman there um, last week there. And I think, like I suppose, there was so much uncertainty going on with the club. You know, it, look, it just looked like it was going to continue from last year, just play a lot of the young fellas. Like, you didn't even know if the likes of Mark McNulty were there. I know Garrod Morris, he had a couple of options to go elsewhere as well. So, like, I'd say, you know... Possibly to Waterford. The club didn't know. Huh? Possibly to Waterford as well. Yeah, yeah. And I, 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 he had a couple of options, actually. I think he had Pats as well, that actually was on one of the clubs as well, I think, as well. So, I, I think he had a couple of options, but I think he, want, I think he wanted to stay in Cork, but... Yeah. Like that, I think once once they once the club found out where they were going to go financially, they were able to do that bit of business, you know, and and keep Garrod and which was important, and obviously getting Stephen Beatty, which was which was huge as well, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Tom, who would you see as a uh, Cove's key player this season? Do you see it as a signing, or do you see it see somebody who's already existing at the club being a key player, or their key player as such going into the season? Yeah, it's it's a hard one to just to pick out one. Um, like I suppose looking at last year, Charlie Lyons at centre back was probably that player. He ended up being our top scorer, which isn't a great sign, I suppose, if your centre backs getting the most goals. But um, I think keeping him was massive because I, I was quite fearful that he'd um he'd find a move away. But look, they've managed to convince him to stay, and he's a massive player for us in in this season. Um, probably midfield, I think Pierce Phillips as well has a big season in him. Maybe Dave Hurley got a bit more of the plaudits, but I think Pierce is a great, great player and they're a great engine on him. And I think with Dave gone, he might get a chance to go a bit forward more um, and, and get a few more goals for himself because I know he has it in his locker and he showed it when he was underage at City. So they're definitely two I'd, I'd be keeping an eye on. And maybe as a, a surprise shout, I think one of the new arrivals, Killian Cooper, of the, the strikers, he he definitely um, looked a dark horse for, for grabbing a few goals. He had a season with us as a very young fella. I think he was only 16, 17 with the academy. Kind of didn't work out there, played senior league. And of all the senior league strikers, he he, he very much impressed. So wouldn't be surprised to see him grabbing a few goals this year. Yeah, Gavin, Jake O'Brien, I thought, was a defender that looked very good last season. I was, you can't blame him for moving to Crystal Palace, obviously, but I was disappointed, I have to say, that he moved because uh, he was a player I kind of wanted to see again for a full season. What did you make of him last season? Yeah, he, he, like he looked he looked like, you know, like a proper defender, if you want a better word, big, powerful, strong. He kind of reminded me, like, he reminded me of Kevin Long when he was at City at the time before he went to Burnley, you know, there was no... You know, just get in there, get don't get your head stuck in, you know, proper defender, like and sure look when you have an opportunity to go to cross England, especially that age, like you know, you have to take the chance, you know. Uh, you know, it's what an opportunity like to you know to go to any club in England. So it's fantastic to see him to get to get to go get to go to England, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Where do you think Cole will finish this season, Tom, if you had to call it? 
and throwing them on the oh. <laughs> yeah that's that is a tough one like it when you look at the league there are so many teams that um are, are quite similar in standard i'd say and i think when there's no fans there it makes it even dif- more difficult to predict i mean you see that with with every sport but i think i think we'll definitely go one better than the last year i think we'll get we'll get the playoffs because you know the lads have that season behind them now and can learn from it i think Fourth is is probably a bit optimistic in some people's eyes, but I think looking at the, the teams in the league, I think it's a it's a reasonable estimate. And obviously, I'm going to be a bit biased because they're my team. But yeah, I, I'm going to go fourth. Yeah, the actual league has strengthened overall, which is the thing, hasn't it as well, Tom? Um, it's a really exciting first division, isn't it this year? Like, yeah, like even Treaty coming in at the last yeah. minute. I mean, people thought they would have been struggling for for bodies and just to get any team, but like. That first division squad is is as good as as most of them, um. So they they'll give teams a run for their money, and like people have said, the, the lads that that loan have brought in are very strong, and yeah. so it, it is a, a very difficult league to call. And I think it'll make for some great games, even if your own team isn't playing. Like some of them games would be well worth watching, you know. Mm. Uh, Gavin, where do you see Cork finishing? I suppose question one and question two. What threats are in the league for you? Well, I suppose. I suppose, like, they, you know, you'll be hoping, Keith, that they'll try and at least get get to the playoffs, you know, like, that'll be their plan. I, I, I mean, I couldn't tell. I, I think, like, you know, I can't look above John Caulfield with Galway. I, I think, like, he's a, ma- like, John Caulfield is just a superb manager and he's a great man manager. Um, And I think, like, he brought in a girl there as well. He brought in a girl called Lisa Fallon as his, like, a technical assistant. She's She does all the... Um, the, um, or what do you call it the, the, the video analysis and stuff like that and other teams and she was with Cork City at the time and he's after bringing her back to her. she was involved with Chelsea as well she's going to be a huge plus for him as well plus he like I mean I was hoping that Conor McCormick would come back to us as well you know but he's a huge sign for Galway like himself and Shane Duggan in midfield are going to be a massive like that's a great midfield to have the two of them in there um, again, like Shelburne there as well. Like I was looking at Shelburne squad. Like I know they saying Kevin O'Connor from Cork City, but another great player there was Shelburne. There was JJ Lunny. Like he's a super. He was superb with Bowes and superb with Waterford. He's a great addition. Um, so like I mean, the, the thing about it as well as I think, as as Tom said there, I think it's probably the most exciting first division in a couple of years. You know, um, and because you know, obviously it, it it's like, it, it's just like that. Everybody will, will will want to beat everybody this year. I mean, obviously, look, Colin Healy is, will want to get one over John Coffey, no matter what, in, in every sense. Like, you know, I, I, I would take two one ills or whatever in, in, in those games. Like, but, you know, look, I, I, I genuinely don't. Like, you don't know what Cork City is going to turn up this year. I don't know. I'd, it'd be great to say that they'll go back up, but, you know, we'll just have to wait and see, you know. I think what it is as well this season, the first division, I don't see one team that say... They're weak. Like even uh, Tom mentioned Treaty there a few minutes ago, and I thought they might have been the team that would be weak because before I saw the players they brought in, obviously, like the likes yeah, of yeah. Mark Ludden from Galway, Charlie Fleming, who you guys know about yeah. as well. And uh, so a surprise there. So there isn't like Wexford there, like they have a lot of very good young players there as well. Now, can can they gel? Like it's a lot, they have a very young side, but they're good, promising players. So I don't see a team in the league weak at all. And there's a couple that look Premier Division standard, like in terms of the, the individual players that brought in. Shelburne brought in so many new players now, um, but will they gel? Like Galway look, I know they've brought in players as well, but they just look more settled. So it'll be interesting to see if Shelburne get on that way as well. And Galway, in that sense, it's, it's a difficult uh, division to judge, to be fair. But interesting enough, of course, Cork play Cove this weekend. I think <laughs> you might have mentioned that already. Uh, someone got it in there. How do you see that game going? Uh, Gavin, we'll go to you first. Um, look, the most important thing really would be to try and get three points. Um, and especially it doesn't turn us cross. It, it's like if there was a crowd there, even Tom would know from coming up, you know, because it's so local and it's so handy. Like you'd probably have four or five thousand there alone for that game. Um, look, the most important thing is try and get three points, but it's going to be hard. Everybody's going to be able to try and be Cork City anyway. And Cove, Cove, like we'll want to improve on last year. They're a strong side, you know, like the likes of Pierce Phillips, Ian Turner, or John Cav. John Cavanaugh, I think, is a fantastic player. He's been very unlucky with injuries. Um, like as Tom said, David O'Leary, I think will be will be a huge plus to him as well. He's very experienced. Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, the game isn't going to be easy. And like that, like Cove, especially with Stuart Ashton involved, they're like 
they'll want to take a scalp as well, especially with him being with City before. So, like, I don't know how the game is. Like, if City win the game, it's going to only going to be one goal, I think. It's going to be a very tight game if they win the game. But, like, I suppose really after this weekend, after watching it, then I'll have a good idea of how City are going to look. Um, but, like, it's going to be very hard to judge. And I think, like, Cove have nothing to lose coming up to turn us cross, you know? They don't, like, because, they, they like, they're young and they, they're, they have the experience this year. So, you know, they're probably a bit more with experienced players, especially in the first division, and they've experienced players in Cork City. Cork City have a lot of, like, you know, 18, 19, 20-year-olds that were thrown in last year to the Premier Division. And, I, obviously, look, hopefully that served them well. Obviously, look, it didn't go too well for them, but hopefully it'll serve them well in the first division, you know? Yeah, Tom, you'd argue that Cove actually have um, a greater cohesion because they've kept most of their players as well. That might be good for them going into the game because we noticed in the Premier Division, the teams kind of with the less signings seem to do better in the first weekend, notably. That's something that um, could be a factor this weekend, couldn't it? Yeah, I definitely think that's uh, something to take into account. Like, you look at the back five, all know each other inside out. They had a, a good season with each other last year. Obviously, you know, Keen Murphy and, and James McCarthy are there to push that them players, but um, the rest of them all know each other well. And I think, like, it, they're going to be very hard to score against Cove. Like, they, they're well organised. They, they'll have the likes of O'Leary and, and maybe Darren Murphy ahead of them to, to protect them. So I, I don't think conceding will be an issue. Um, I think it's if we can get the, the enough goals up front, up the pitch, then um, that then we'll really push on. But like looking at Friday's game, like it's a free hit for us. You know, no one has has any expectation other than a City win. Like the pressure's all on them. And I think the cold lads, they'll be absolutely raring to go. Like a lot of them would have been released by City, you know, in the last couple of years, the likes of Pierce and and um, John Cavs, so like they they'd love nothing more than to go and, and stick on to City, to be honest. And, and that's what Ashton and them are going to tell them in the dressing room. And I, I wouldn't want to be the City fair players having to face them because they're going to be up for that game like nothing else. So you heard it here first. Tom is playing the underdog card, and uh, thanks for, <laughs> yeah. for coming on. Yeah. Really enjoyed that. <laughs> best of luck with your seasons, and best of luck with the game at the weekend. Looking forward to that one as well myself. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. Yes. Can I just say there as well, just before I go, I just want to say, I just want to pay a privilege there to a fellow that was involved with Cork City of and Tom would know him because he went down to the games there. He's on the cover of this week's um, Cork City magazine, Finn Barroche. He used to follow the club up and down the country there. He died unexpectedly there a couple of months ago. Um, Tom would know him from, he used to go down to the games with Gary Max Sweeney there. They'd always go in, even to the Cove games because even when Cove were, were a home, you could go to the games. I used to go to Cove and Finn Bar would always go down to the home games as well, you know, so... You know, just a, a just to pay a tribute to Finbar, who was a great, he was a great friend of mine as well, and I used to go to all the games with him as well. You know, so thanks for that, Keith. I appreciate that, and thanks. No problem. Tom. I echo those sentiments as well. All right, thanks very much, guys. So come on, fair play to you. Thanks, Keith. All right, thanks. Thank you.